What's going on everybody? Thank you so much for checking in. In this video, we're going to go over SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF. And we're also going to cover some other notable names on the market, such as Tesla, Apple, Amazon, AMD, Nvidia, and Meta. We're going to talk about these charts on the macro and the micro timeframes, providing you with levels to focus on in terms of resistance and support for the week ahead. Now, before we jump into our charts, we have to talk about some things that happened last week and some things that are happening this week that could potentially send us higher or lower. First things first, last week we had the PCE report, otherwise known as an inflation report. This is the report that the feds prefer to watch in terms of measuring inflation on their end. So December's inflation looked like just about the same as November. You can see that it increased just by 2.6%, a lot better than the highs that we were at last week, which means that the Federal Reserve's approach to reducing inflation has been working. Remember, the Federal Reserve has been raising rates since the beginning of last year, an attempt to control prices, and it looks like they have succeeded so far. Now, speaking of the Fed, this week, the Federal Reserve will be meeting for the first time in 2024. This is their meeting that will occur on January 30th and 31st, and they will be deciding the fate of interest rates. Now, the market expects the Federal Reserve to hold rates steady, but they do expect the Federal Reserve to make some comments on when they will cut interest rates. Remember that the interest rate cutting has been the foundation of the market's entire rally since October of last year. The Federal Reserve's comments about the fact that they would be cutting rates in 2024 got investors very excited, and this is why the market has been going up so strongly. So with that being said, this week you want to pay attention to any comments that they make about telling us that they will cut interest rates. The market doesn't want to hear them say that they are no longer considering cutting interest rates because that would cause a severe downturn. It's very unlikely to happen, but it could happen and it's something that you need to watch out for. Last but not least, some things that are happening this week are earnings from companies such as Apple, Amazon, AMD, uh, and Meta. So these are very large companies and they will be reporting earnings this week. How they do is likely going to determine the fate of the markets next week or, or the following week's move, only because these companies hold so much weight in the market and as tech companies, they will be watched closely. Remember, many tech stocks are already trading at all-time highs. You can see the triple Q index is trading at an all-time highs, which is the tech index. And that means that these companies need to come in and impress the markets. We'll talk about the expected move and their option chains later on in this video. So now that we've covered everything that's happening on the economic front and everything that's happening on the earnings front, let's go ahead and dive into our charts. First things first, we have SPY here, which closed near its all-time highs. This is the hourly chart on SPY, and you can see that it got rejected right around 489.12, but still closed very close to that point, which means that this is the resistance that many people will be watching for the week ahead. They will need to break out of this level in order for SPY to, move, to start moving above 490. Now, we usually have a price target for you above the resistance breakout, but considering the fact that this is an all-time highs, we don't have any previous historical points for us to create a price target based off of. So we're just going to have to monitor its volume and monitor its momentum to what measure where the stock or where the market is going to potentially reach a reversal point or another resistance. Now, for SPY on the daily chart, let's go ahead and take a look at where it closed. We can see that SPY is still trading very much above its 10 and 20 day moving averages. These are the levels that we have held as a support ever since we broke back above them in November of last year. You can see that this rally has been moving up. Every time we've retested those points, we have bounced higher. And so as long as we're above them, we do expect us to stay in a very strong bullish territory. Now remember with earnings coming on this week, volatility did increase. You can see that the volatility index, which is VIX, this measures the volatility of SPY or the S&P 500 in specific. And you can see that on Wednesday and Thursday, it has started to increase. Now this increase in volatility was expected considering the fact that we're going into an FOMC week and a week filled with earnings. So now that we've covered SPY on the daily chart, let's go ahead and talk about the micro time frame once again. As long as SPY is holding the 482.80 level, we're going to be strongly bullish on it, which is also the same about level that we can see that the 10-day moving average is trading at. So right around that 481 to 482 mark, we want SPY to stay above that level for us to stay strongly bullish. 
If it moves below that level, the problem becomes the fact that SPY did not create much support on this rally here. You can see that this move right off of the 472.40 mark has been pretty vertical and the, sp and the market did not have time to pull back such as it did here and it did here to create a support point for us to go off of. So that means a break below 482.80 can cause a very strong downturn towards 477. So just keep that in mind if you are trading the bullish or the bearish side this week. Now in terms of swinging puts on this market, this is not something we would do right now. We would only considering consider swinging puts if SPY was to close below 472.40, then we would start looking at holding a put or a short position overnight. So now that we've covered SPY in total, let's go ahead and move on to our next stock, which is going to be Tesla. Now Tesla took a very strong downturn last week after they reported disappointing earnings, especially in terms of their guidance and their projections for the year ahead. Now remember, this is the first earnings report that we are seeing in 2024. And so how these companies do is very important, but more importantly, it's what they project. So what you wanna be paying attention to is guidance. Tesla lowered its guidance for 2024, which is what caused such a strong downturn. You have many other companies reporting earnings this week, so make sure you're paying attention to the guidance that they're giving, because if a company increases its guidance, you can see that it can end up like IBM, which it did so last week. And you can see that despite the market downturn to end off last week, you can see that IBM still strong, strongly closed. This is one to watch for it to move up because they uh, increase their guidance. This can rally for the months to follow because of that reason. So make sure you're paying attention to that when you're watching tech earnings this week. Now back to Tesla, you can see that despite the fact that it tried to bounce the very next day, Tesla buyers are not there right now. Nobody wants to touch this stock. It looks like even at 180 below this 193 support, there's nobody buying it still, which means Tesla is likely to see more downside action. For Tesla in specific, these are the shorter term charts that we're focused on. The support you want to focus on is going to be 178.40 to start. Below 178.40, we do expect Tesla to continue its downturn towards 163.70. That would be our next downside price target. And below that point, we see Tesla moving to 152 to 153. Now, yes, we do have bullish territory above 193, but that is strictly for the gap fill. We're not very bullish on Tesla, even if it breaks above 193. This is not a place in which we will hold any calls overnight. This would strictly be attempted as a day trade. For Tesla to be back in bullish territory, it really needs to be back above this level, which it is currently very far away from. Tesla needs to be back above 265 for buyers to start trusting it again. Now, this is not impossible if you are a long term investor and you're looking for a place to add Tesla. Maybe now is not such a bad time to start adding into the position, but we do see more downside from Tesla and we do want to see better earnings and better outlook for us to trust the company again. Now, moving on to our next stock, which is going to be Apple. Apple is trading above all of its healthy moving averages, but you can see that it broke below a pattern last week. So last week it was creating what's known as a bullish flag. Up until Friday, you can see that the stock moved to close below the previous day's lows, which means it broke below the overnight trend for the first time since gain it, gaining it back in the beginning of January. So this is significant because Apple is going to be reporting earnings this week. And if Apple is now below its overnight trend, that means that buyers are no longer as confident as they were a week ago going into the earnings week. So with that being said, if you are going to be looking at Apple this week, you need to know that analysts are expecting very strong earnings in Q4. Many of the companies that have already reported earnings so far this year, analysts actually had very lowered projections for Q4, but this time around for Apple, you can see that they expect a very strong quarter, which is common for a tech company during the holiday season. So for Apple this week, these are, these, these are the levels you want to focus on, first being 192. Uh, we're not going to be bearish on Apple until it breaks below 180.30. If it moves below that level, then Apple is likely to free fall towards its 173 move. But this is a very far away move. And remember, uh, we will be updating you on these levels in the coming videos. So make sure you're checking back in so we can update you on these levels because they will change after earnings. So during earnings, we don't know which way the stock will go. Apple can go 
up $20, down $20, but let's see what the market expects for it to do. So if we look up Apple and we look at the option chain this week, we can see that there's a 39% volatility, implied volatility that is, uh, and that is only expected to go higher as we start getting closer and closer to those earnings. As of right now, 40% implied volatility translates to about a $7 move. So currently, markets expect Apple to make a $7 move up or down this week. If it makes a $7 move up, it will reach a level right around our 192 resistance, or I'm sorry, 199 resistance. And if it moves $7 down as markets expect, it will end right around that 185 level in the week ahead. The next stock on our watches is going to be Amazon. Amazon is also expected to report earnings this week, the same day as Apple. And here are some levels on Amazon to watch. First things first, Amazon has been one of the slower moving stocks on the market, just like Google. Google and Amazon have both moved a little bit less um, strongly than the rest of the market, such as Meta or such as Nvidia and AMD. So that means we are likely going to see a big move on their earnings. And we'll talk about their option chain in just a little bit. But in terms of their current levels ahead of earnings, again, after earnings, the stock can go up $20 or down $20. We, do, we never know what's gonna happen on earnings. But ahead of this date, here are some levels to focus on. First, the support is gonna be 157.90. Below that level, it can downslide down towards 154, but we won't be fully bearish on Amazon unless it breaks below 147.40. If it moves below that point, then we will start taking a put position overnight. We will be comfortable trading puts below these levels during a day trade, but for us to swing a put or a short position, we need Amazon below 147.40. To the upside, Amazon is coming up on its 162 resistance. If it breaks above that level, then the next price target is gonna be right around 164. For Amazon, here is what the option chain is expecting. Actually, before we jump into the option chain, let's talk about Amazon's earnings and let's see what the market is expecting or what analysts are expecting. So Amazon, um, it looks like Analysts are also expecting a very strong quarter. You can see that they have been ramping up expectations ever since the end of last year. And Amazon stock has moved up with those expectations because every time they've reported, they actually beat expectations. And that is thanks to their AWS um, uh, systems or cloud system because that has been bringing in a ton of revenue for them. So you can see that for Q4, analysts are once again ex raising their expectations from 58 cents a share to 81 cents a share. So that is a very significant jump to look at. If Amazon comes above that level, then we do expect to sharply the stock to sharply move higher. Now, an, uh, the option chain expects a $10 move. That is a 70% implied volatility. So if Amazon does report good earnings, then it will move towards our uh, 164 level. In fact, it will move above our 164 level. But if it misses on earnings, then it will move down $10 below our 154 level. The next stock on our watch list is going to be AMD, which also reports earnings this week. It actually reports earnings on Tuesday. Here are some levels to focus on for AMD on the daily time frame. We can see that AMD is still trading above its 10 and 20 day moving averages. This is the same levels that has, has been holding ever since its last earnings. You can see that last earnings, the stock moved above that blue and purple line, which are the 10 and 20 day moving averages. And ever since then, every time it has come back to those levels, it has moved higher. Now looking at the shorter term time frame for AMD, here are some levels to focus on ahead of earnings. First, you have a resistance at 184.92, which is also AMD's all-time highs. So typically, we would give you a price target above this level, but considering it's an all-time highs, we just have to watch its volume and momentum above that level for us to gauge where the stock can potentially come to another resistance. To the downside, we have a support at 170.65. We will remain bullish on AMD unless it breaks below 154.30. Below 154.30, then we would consider entering puts as a swing, For but until then, above that level, we will still remain bullish overnight. For AMD, the market expects a about a $17 move on earnings. So that is an extremely high implied volatility. Its current implied volatility is reading at 103%. So if you are an options trader and you are looking for AMD, and specifically for this week, if you are looking for an earnings play, you wanna keep that implied volatility in mind because if AMD doesn't move that $17 expected move, then all these options that are outside of the 
in the money contracts are going to be crushed nearly to zero. That is because implied volatility is part of what makes up an option contract's price. And if it starts going up too high, then the option chain is going to be inflated and you're going to be overpaying for options, especially if the stock doesn't make the expected move. But if AMD does make that expected move, we do expect it to move above 200. Let's see what analysts are expecting from AMD. Let's take a look at their expectations. We can see that AMD's Q4 earnings are ramped up. They're actually above all the uh, expectations from the previous quarters. Last quarter's expectations were 49 cents a share. AMD came in at 53 cents a share. For this quarter, they're looking at 58 eight cents a share estimated. So they can easily overcome that, especially with the demand of AI. And we do expect the stock to at least stay bullish and continue moving higher in the weeks ahead. The next stock on our watch list is going to be Nvidia. Nvidia does not report earnings this week. It reports earnings later this month. On the daily time frame, you can see that Nvidia has still been holding that 10 day moving average ever since it had that $500 breakout. For Nvidia, here are some levels to focus on for the week ahead. We have a support at 599.40 and a resistance at 628.50. If it breaks above this level, we do expect Nvidia to move towards 650. If it breaks below 599.40, anything below that level, we do still see Nvidia being bullish. The only way we would turn our bullishness on Nvidia is if it breaks below 500, which is why we don't have any red territory here for Nvidia. This is not a stock that we would bet against. Even if it gives a pullback, we would not be playing that pullback. We are strictly focused on the upside for Nvidia because we do expect it to continue rally going into 2024. And right now, the stock has way too much buying momentum for anybody to be betting against it. Again, Nvidia would have to move below 500 for us to begin considering trading against the stock. Last but not least, we have Meta, which is expected to report earnings also this week. Meta is closing at an all-time high as of last Friday. You can see it closed just below that 400 mark. On the daily chart, Meta is still holding the 10 and 20 day moving averages and it has been doing so ever since it moved back above them here back in December and you can see that it retested them and continued moving higher. Meta option chain expects about a $28 move from the stock. Implied volatility is currently at 76% and that is expected to only grow. If you are looking at Meta on the shorter term time frame, let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, you have a resistance at 386.80, which is also the all-time high, which is why we don't have a price target above that level. To the downside, Meta has a support at 385, but after it reports earnings, especially with the fact that there is expected to be a $28 move, if Meta misses on earnings, then we can potentially see Meta below 377 uh, and towards three, the 360s. For Meta, analysts are expecting a very strong quarter of $4.81 per share. If we compare that to the same time last year, which it came in at $2.12, that is more than double. So if Meta can indeed move above that expected EPS as it has been doing so for the last four quarters, then we can potentially see Meta make that $27 move higher towards $4.20 plus. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and thank you all for checking in. Best of luck for the week ahead.